So maybe you were lucky enough this year during the holiday season to upgrade your old iPad to a new one, or maybe you got your first ever iPad, whether that is the entry level iPad or a fully loaded iPad Pro. Combine that with iPadOS 26 and things are gonna be looking, acting, and feeling a little bit different. So in this video, what I wanna do is walk you guys through the main changes of iPadOS 26 and what to do first on your brand new iPad to make sure it's optimized for your personal experience, whether you wanna use it as a tablet first, as a standalone iPad, or if you wanna go full tilt with a Magic Keyboard and Apple Pencil and turn your iPad into your everyday computer. Without further ado, let's get into the first 10 things to do and set up on your iPad to make sure you're optimized for iPadOS 26. Let's get into it. But now if you do enjoy videos like this one, we give you software walkthroughs of all things Apple, consider subscribing to the channel and help us get to a million subscribers here in 2026. Well everyone, let's get right into it. And just for reference, I am using my M4 iPad Pro and I'm using it on a Magic Keyboard. Now by no means do you need a Magic Keyboard, you can do everything that I'm mentioning here just in pure tablet form. This is just how I wanna show it off for an easier kind of how-to guide. But to start off, let's start off with customization and what you want your home screen and your lock screen to look like. So the first thing you're ever gonna wanna do is customize this to your heart's desire and there's a good amount of customizations now moving forward. So if you are on your home screen and you just long press anywhere that's empty, you can see that we are now in jiggle or wiggle mode, whatever you guys wanna call it. And that's gonna be the first customization piece, right? So you're able to move whatever apps you want to any part of the grid now, which is something that came only a couple years ago. You also have your widgets up here that you can also move around and treat like applications. And you can see that I have mine mimicking the today view of years past, which was around with iPadOS 13. And then you have your dock down here. So your dock, you can customize it in a few different ways. Now with iPadOS 26, you can have up to anywhere between 24 and 29 applications in your dock at one time. Of course, they're gonna get smaller and smaller as you add them. And one quick way to add them is if you go on here and actually long press and hold, you can drag multiple of them at the same time, drop them off, and you can see that they all get added right there. And that is going to be your home screen and your dock. You also have the ability to go up here. This is your new edit button. You tap on here. You have the ability to add widgets, to customize, edit wallpaper, and edit pages. So to add the widgets, you get an abundance of recommended widgets right here. And then you have all the different applications that have widget support right here. You can click on any of them. You, like this is the Redfin one. They have different sizes, different group sizes. You have your extra large now, which is great. You have your screen time, so small, medium, large, and then some of them will have that extra large. You just tap in, let's say if I wanna add this widget, it'll add it in wherever it sees fit. So that's great to see. I'm gonna remove it because I don't really wanna deal with that. But in terms of other customizations, you can press customize on here and this allows you to play with the look and feel of all the applications. So first and foremost, you have your light and your dark mode. So you can see here that my screen gets a little bit dimmer when I do your light and dark over here. I like to keep it on light, which is nice. You also have your default, which allows you to have just the default colors for all your icons. You have your dark icons, so you can go dark mode on all the icons if you want. You can go clear, which is this new kind of liquid glass look that people either love it or they hate it, but most applications adopt it pretty nicely. And then you also have your tinted. So this tinted one is going to color match to the best of its ability to your current wallpaper. And then on top of that, you will then customize them to wherever you see fit. So you can see here, I can go to purple, blue, green, different hues, different opacities. You have this button right here, which allows you to go back to the themed icon. And you can even go on here and press to get a better look. So let's say you wanted to color match this color more, it'll then do that for you. I like to keep it in the default color for now, just so it's easier to read. But then you also have the ability to make these small and large. So that's what this button right here does. If I tap on here, you can see that my icons actually got larger and the actual name of the application left completely. You can go back to do the regular. So you see that the name show up, there's a regular size and there's a larger size. For the iPad, because it is such a large display, I normally like to keep it in the large icon mode and I know what apps I'm dealing with already. And one good thing to note here is that it doesn't limit how many apps and icons you can have on the grid itself. It's just taking up a little bit more space if you wanna do that. And then lastly, from a customization standpoint, if I scroll down, long press, this is going to be your lock screen. If you press on customize, you have an abundance of different options here to get started and get customized. For instance, you have your clock right here. So if I tap on here, you can actually make this more or less opaque. This is relatively new with iPadOS 26, different number of fonts, which is good to see. You can change the color of those fonts. You can go to solids if you want to, change the liquid glassiness of it all, like I mentioned earlier. You can actually enlarge this and make it smaller if you want. And then you have the ability to add more stuff into your actual widgets up here. So you can have your location, your weather, clock, calendar invites. You have the ability to add even more widgets on here if you want to. I like to keep this kind of clean and blank because I already have enough widgets on my home screen. And then when you're done, you just press done right here. And then you go in here and you're back to your normal home screen. So that's how you set up your home screen and your lock screen. 
customize it to your heart's desire. One last thing to note here is if I press edit and go into edit pages, you then have the ability to hide pages. So for instance, I have this page hidden right now. I can unhide it or hide it again if I want to. So it doesn't show up. I can hide this entire one if I would like to, and you can continue to do that as you see fit. But that is going to be how you customize your home screen and your lock screen. Now this next one has to be do with the new multitasking and windowing mode that came to iPadOS 26. And the beauty about this, again, if you are new to the iPad or you haven't used an iPad in a while, or maybe you have used an iPad and you're just not used to this new windowing mode, there's a bunch of different things that are going to be great about this windowing mode. So if we scroll down to where it says multitasking and gestures, you have the option to do a couple of different things. So you can go full screen app, which means if you go full screen app, no matter what situation you're in, if you open up another application, it's going to always go full screen and you can't really move it around or do anything like that from a customization standpoint. But if I go back in here and I go into windowed mode, you then see that this little icon down here showed up, which allows you to resize those windows. And now you can resize the window anywhere and it'll act like a true windowed mode. So this new windowed mode can be treated just like Mac OS. You can move it around, resize it to however you see fit, make it smaller, make it larger. Like I said, you can use your finger, so you can still be in tablet mode and use your iPad in this manner if you want to. And then of course you have your traffic light stops over here, so to quit out of it, to minimize it, and then to enlarge it if you want to. And then you still have Stage Manager. Stage Manager was the original kind of windowing mode that we had before windowed apps. I'm not a huge fan of it. I, for the most part, just ignore Stage Manager, but it is a decent way to kind of bundle kind of groups of applications together if you want to. But windowed mode or full screen app mode is, for me, the best way to go. And with the new windowing mode, you have the 12 applications open at the same time. So you can see I'm on LumaFusion here, which I'm going to resize, make it smaller. I can go in here. Let's say if I want to open up X, I can do that as well. And then what's nice about this is that you do have windowed controls as well. So if I go in here, you can move this to the left or to the right. And then I can go in here and move this one to the left if I want to as well. And then you have your split view, which then acts the same way that old split view would work, which is great to see. And you also still have your persistent window. So if I go in here, long press and then enter slide over, I can then do that as well, and that keeps it at the forefront at all times. So that's just one way to navigate your new iPadOS 26 computer. So now this is mostly for the people that do rock it in tablet mode a lot of the time. So we're going to talk about gestures when it comes to using your hand with your screen, because that's how this iPad was first meant to be. So if, let's go into our settings first, and you want to go again into multitasking and gestures, and make sure that these gestures are turned on. So swipe to reveal menu bar, swipe from the top center of the screen to reveal the menu bar. So if I swipe down here, you can see that I get this new menu bar, which wasn't there before. Then you have your four and five finger app switching. So for instance, if I grab four fingers here and swipe across, I move over to the next full screen app. If I keep doing that, it'll go to the next full screen moment and it'll continue and continue until I run out of applications and then I can go back and forth. Again, that's with four fingers. You also have the ability to use five fingers to quit out of an applications if you want to. You can go up, hold that in. And then you can even, instead of just quitting out, you can then go like this, hold it, and then you have your app switcher or your multitasking switcher, which is great to see. And then you also have some finger gestures for copy it. So let's say I go in here and I want to select this realities. If I want to copy it, I can then go down here. And if I want to paste it, I just three fingers, three finger tap, press paste. And then there you have it right there. So you're able to use your three fingers to tap, and then you can also undo by swiping, redo by swiping right. So it's very intuitive, and if you just master these gestures, you'll literally never have to use a keyboard, which is great to see. Okay, so now the next one we gotta show off is the Files application. The Files application got a huge revamp in iPadOS 26, and it's a lot more usable nowadays. So for instance, if you go into On My iPad, you have your new column view, and the ability to customize that column view the same way that you would with Finder on Mac. So you can see here we have the name, date modified, date created, the size of it, and then your three dots. So of course you can sort just by tapping on here, so I can sort alphabetically, sort by date modified, date created, the size of it, but then you also have the ability to add even more columns. So for instance, if I wanna add the kind of file, so folder and things like that, and then you also have the ability to resize each one of those columns to your heart's desire to be able to fit all the information that you see fit with the files application. Another great one is if I right click on any of these folders, you have the ability to first off customize a folder and tags. So I'm able to go in here. I can change the color of it so I can make it orange if I want to. You can say it change to orange. I can add an emoji just so I'm aware of what's going on at all times. I'm going to clear that because I don't want it to be this color. But you can see that you can customize that folder. And then even on top of that, if you right click, so if I go back here, let's right click on the temp folder and go to add to. You have the ability to add it to your favorites, but then also add it to your doc. So if I add it to my doc, scroll down to my doc, you can now see that I have my temp folder down here, which opens up in this fan mode. Or if I want to, I can also go in here and sort by its name, date added, kind. I can make it into a grid. So if I tap on here, now it's a little easier to kind of view and, and exercise and see exactly what's going on. 
I can go in here again, go to my options. I can remove it from doc or show in files. So if I want to remove it, I can do that. And same thing goes with this folder. If I want to just remove it from the doc, I can now do that as well. And then what I like to do normally is to keep my iCloud desktop in my doc so I have easy access to it at all times. So the new files application is amazing. And that doesn't even include the background app refreshes and the background downloads now being seamless. Another piece of iPad OS that you should really get to know is going to be Spotlight Search. Now Spotlight can be accessed in a few different ways. The first one is by swiping down from your home screen, you have the ability to open up your Spotlight Search. You can either type to Siri, you can use your microphone and actually ask it whatever you want. And what's nice about this is that it's going to be adaptive and responsive in terms of what it thinks you're gonna be using for the time being. So for instance, these are the applications that I kind of use at this time of day, this day of the week. You can just run in here and run the shortcut, add a new note, or go into your recent searches as well. Another way to access this, which is gonna be great for multitasking, is by pressing Command Space on the keyboard, and then it brings it up as well, and that's gonna be great for multitasking like I mentioned. For instance, if I open up, let's say something like Chrome right here, and then I wanna open up another application, but I'm in this full screen mode, and maybe that application isn't in my dock, if I press Command Space and type in another application, let's say maybe like eBay, right? I can go in here and drag it into the space, and now I'm in split view right here directly from Spotlight Search, and I'm able to use it however you see fit, and I can continue to do that, by pressing it's more. So for instance, if I want to open up another application, open up Redfin, bring it into the middle, and now I have my third floating window with no issues whatsoever that I can resize and add however I see fit. So mastering Spotlight is an amazing thing to see. And I can also go into Spotlight and search for shortcuts, or for instance, I can type in shortcuts and then I have my Apple frames on here to get easy access to it. I can search for iMessage information. I can search for anything inside of the system directly from Spotlight. So I kind of use this as a control center, which is a great segue into your actual control center. So if I swipe up again, let's get out of here. You now have your control center. So this is another kind of quick access menu to get some of the quicker things or maybe accessibility thing or utility type of use cases. This is how it's kind of introduced to you when you first get it. And you can see you have a, a few things here, right? You have all your connectivity stuff, which is if you long press, you get your AirDrop, your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, your cellular data. If it's an iPhone or an iPad with data, you have the ability to silence it, to auto lock rotate, maybe some home kit stuff. But what's nice about this is now you can swipe up and there's different pages. So you have a second page to add as much as you want. You have your media controls down here. You have your home kit controls down here. And then you have your connectivity controls as well. But what's nice about this is that if you long press, it acts like another home screen. I can add a control right here and you have an abundance of different controls you can add. For instance, the ambient music, tap on that. I can click on it long press if I want to. And now you can hear that there's ambient music playing in the background, which is nice to see. And if I scroll down, you can see that it is playing right there. We'll pause that. And that's just a bunch of different controls you can add. As Like you saw, there's Shazam, there's a camera app, there's a low power mode widget, there's AirDrop, there's a bunch of other things you can access here. And then of course, a lot of accessibility modes are accessed directly through the control center if that's something that you wanna get into. Now this next section is going to be for the people that are using the Magic Keyboard alongside of their iPad. And again, it doesn't have to be the Magic Keyboard. If you're using a Bluetooth mouse or Bluetooth trackpad, then this all will apply to you as well. As you can see, if you shake this similar to Mac OS, you can now find it much easier because it'll enlarge the actual mouse pointer to find it exactly where it is. But if we go into our settings over here, let's full screen this to make it a little bit easier to view. Go into our general, we can then go into our trackpad specifically, and here you have a little bit more control in terms of how fast you want the tracking speed to be. I like to keep it on the slower side, you have natural scrolling, you can actually tap to click, two finger for secondary click, or the system haptics as well, so you get a little bit of customization. But then if you want a little bit more control in terms of your trackpad and things like that, go into your accessibility, Scroll all the way down to where it says pointer control, and then you have the ability to customize it even more. So for instance, you can increase contrast, automatically hide the pointer. I can change the color. As you can see, mine is outlined in red, green, yellow, orange. I've had it in red for so long, I'm gonna keep it that way. You can change the pointer size to be as big as you want. I like to keep it as small as possible. You can have it ignore the trackpad, double tap to drag, trackpad inertia, and then pointer animations as well, as well as a scroll speed. So you have a little bit more customization when it comes to your actual pointer. And again, it doesn't need to be the magic keyboard. It can be any Bluetooth mouse that you use alongside your iPad. And then one final piece that I think everybody should know is going to be how to manage your battery on your iPad or for any iOS device. So there's a lot of information that you can get now directly from the battery section in the application or in the settings application. You can see what's taking up a lot of battery. You can see last charge 41 minutes ago. And if you wanna get a little bit more, you can actually go individually to see view all battery usage. So you get a little bit more information as to which applications are taking up the most amount of battery, what type of screen on time you've had, what type of USB-C accessories are taking a battery as well. You can tap into here to get a little bit more information, lets you know exactly what's going on with that USB-C accessory. 
But then you can also go in here and learn your, about your battery health. So I'm at 91% battery capacity, 237 cycle count. I can limit to 80% charge if I want to, but my battery health for the most part is pretty normal, even though I'm not great at taking care of it. And then another piece to show off is going to be in the privacy and security settings. So if you go over here, you wanna make sure you go into your location services and you wanna go into all the applications that have your location. You wanna go in here one by one and learn and understand which one is going to be best for your situation. So if you are always on the MLB app and you wanna use it all the time, you can do that. For instance, Google Maps, it should have my precise location because I'm using it for maps and stuff like that. So overall, go in here, go one by one, and understand which one is gonna be using up all your location services. And then you also have the ability to see which apps are allowed to track. For instance, my Discord can track me, but not Disney Plus, eBay can, but not the iPhone app. So these are all things from a privacy and security standpoint, you can go in and manipulate as you see fit. So these are all the things that I think you need to do when you first get started on an iPad, especially with the new iPad OS 26. Everything that I mentioned is applicable to all the new iPads, including the cheaper $299 A16 iPad, because it can run the windowing modes and things like that. So do keep that in mind, but Let's finish up this video and congratulations on your new iPad, everybody. Well, everyone, that will just about do for this video. As you saw, the iPad, if you haven't used it in a couple years, has completely changed in terms of its capabilities, what it can do, what the software looks like, what it feels like, and all the different applications that are now built into the iPad. But the beautiful thing about the iPad is that at its core, it's still an iPad. So if you haven't picked up an iPad in a couple years, it'll still be relatively familiar. Just a couple things here and there that you have to learn along the way. But that'll do it. If you learned something new, definitely leave a comment down below of what that was or maybe something that was omitted from this video that I got to add to the next one and also let me know if you guys want to see an iOS or a macOS version of this but that'll do it for this video if you made it to the end leave a little dolphin and if you guys want to watch more videos like this one check out one of these videos right here but hopefully you're enjoying your brand new iPad peace everyone